Hello, friends. Welcome to the Ancient Health Podcast, and I'm your host, Dr. Chris Motley. Today, we're going to talk about chronic colds, coughs, sinus infections that occur at the same time every year, especially in your children, your kids, and it happens at exactly the same time every season. And this can actually spread it to the family and the family starts to have these reoccurring sinus infections and colds. And so this podcast is to give you a simple explanation of what mechanism is occurring to allow this cycle to keep repeating itself. And we're also going to talk about some therapies that you need to look into that actually helps build the immune system to fight off the infections and keeps you from getting the cold. And then we're going to talk about some herbs. We'll talk about elderberry. We'll talk about chrysanthemum, acerola cherry. We're also going to talk about andrographis and astragalus. If you write those down very quickly, just kidding, don't do it too quickly. But if you have any investigation into these herbs, you're going to find out that they are Chinese medicine and Ayurvedic medicine's answers to help build the immune system quickly and efficiently to fight off the infections. In fact, when I have instituted these types of herbals within families, I found out that the parents always report back to me that every kid in the classroom got sick except their child. I can't make any promises. Remember, this is not medical advice. This is just what I've experienced in the office daily. So let's go ahead and talk about the mechanisms of these reoccurring colds. Now, one thing that is very frustrating for a family, especially parents, is that when the child goes to school, they automatically assume that there's going to be cold and sinus infections because they've gotten used to their child having the same infection every season. Now, one of the main things we hear is that if strep is spreading at school or enterovirus or cold virus, we often expect that it's coming from other kids and it's spread from person to person, which is not false. I do believe things can be spread from person to person. But I wanted to talk about the mechanism of how dormant infections that have already been in the child can be stimulated by an external microbe, let's say from somebody else in the classroom, and that causing weakness in your child's body allows the old infection to come to the surface. If your child keeps getting a reoccurring infection, and let's say you keep finding strep on the child, They keep getting strep throat. They keep getting chronic ear infections. That's either strep or staph. They more than likely did not get a brand new case of strep from school. And this was a brand new infection. In Chinese medicine, we always look for the dormant chronic infections that's been residing in a person, which gives us an explanation why they keep having the same thing over and over again. So let's change our mindset. Yes, we can have it transfer from child to child, but more than likely there is a dormant infection in the child, in the throat, in the head, in the sinus glands, in the lungs that keeps getting basically reinstated. So as the immune system starts to decline from, let's say, a flu virus, yes, it can cause sickness, that can beat the body down, creating higher histamine response. And this will allow the old infection, like a strep, to come to the surface. So remember, infections will always try to what? Transfer to other new cells and to what? Utilize nutrients from the cell or from the tissue to keep surviving. That's the job of the infection. Now, there is also another realm I got. I want you guys to understand too. So we have the infections that are in dormancy that can come to the surface. But we're also going to talk about why an infection would reinfect a certain organ. Let's go over those mechanisms as well. So if your child goes into the fall time season, and let's say you can recall that every single season in October or November, my child keeps getting strep throat or chronic bronchitis, that would first tell me to investigate the chronic infections of those organs. If you kept founding strep, flu virus, enterovirus, Epstein-Barr virus, if you find these are reoccurring, remember, you don't have to look for every other child or every other person that's reinfecting your child. It's in the body in a dormant state. And if you see this occurring, I want you to know that 
as we bring this to the surface, these infection states to the surface, it's our opportunity to help increase the immune system so that the body can learn to let go of them. In Chinese medicine, the lungs and large intestine are being energized during this season, during the fall time season. So imagine this. You have the element series. So I don't want to get too complicated, but you have the fall time season, which is called the metal. So think of metal as minerals. Minerals flow into the water, making mineral water. And that is the winter season. So the winter season, which is that water season, will actually go in and feed the wood, which means what? Springtime, wood growth. That's the spring. The spring will then go into the, the summer, which is going to be red. It's going to be you know fire. It's going to be really hot. It's energized. And then you go into the yellow season, which is late summer. So you had this revolution in the element cycle. It's like this cycle of earth. Now, in the fall time season, the lungs and large intestine are meant to get more repaired because during the summertime season, if you can imagine, the lungs were pulling in a lot of pollen, a lot of dust. We're supposed to be outside gathering crops or outside you know, gathering food to get prepared for the fall time season, for the fall time gathering. So if you can imagine, your body is getting ready to go into a hibernation during the winter season. Your body is then saying, okay, we need to detoxify everything we gathered during the summer season and get the body cleaned out. So as we hibernate, we're not just recirculating toxins all winter long. So the fall time season, the lungs and the large intestine are getting an extra dose of chi. The cycles of the earth and the chi in your body is heavily going to put an emphasis on your lungs and large intestine so that they get prepared for your body's hibernation. I hope that makes sense. So now the lungs are going to be not only healing and basically maturing, getting nourishment, but they will have a little bit extra responsibility. They and the colon, they're paired meridians. The large intestine and the lungs are paired meridians. They're organs that are basically linked and they are linked by the cell type. Basically, if you look into cellular um, typing, they're both made of the endoderm, which means they're connected. And so Whenever they have more energy, they repair more, but they actually detoxify the body more. They have a couple of mechanisms. They're trying to be nourished and be repaired and get ready for winter, but they're also going to take the infections in your body and make it their goal to push them out. So some individuals have more problems with their colon and digestive system. More diarrhea, more bloating during the fall time season. They do not know why. Some people have a reoccurrence of H. pylori bacteria or salmonella in their gut. And they're like, why in the world do I get diarrhea or digestive stuff every single fall time season? Now, remember, it's because the organs are getting a little more energy. So as your child goes to school and you notice that, man, they're getting sick again. It's the last week of October or the last week of November and they get cold again. They get a cold and a sinus infection. It's because the lungs see those dormant infections and they're going to do their best to get it out. They realize that the body has an old strep infection or an old flu virus in the body and there's extra energy and they're like, I got to get this stuff out to get my body prepared for the hibernation. So we get upset because every single season, we do everything we can to reduce the fevers, reduce the sniffling, the sneezing, but that's all the way the body is trying to attempt to get that stuff out. It's like your body's mechanism to get rid of inflammation. Have a fever, burn it off. Blow it out of your nose. Ooze it out of your ear. <laughs> Basically sweat it out. And now I understand that when a child's hurting, when they have a headache, when they have fever, we do have mechanisms to help them keep out of the extremes of the cold and sinus issue. But we often stop it the mechanisms of detoxification in our world today. Now, understand, because we're all working, we're all moving at a, fa a fast pace, and this is the issue. We're supposed to be hibernating and going more internal during the season, but we are in a culture now where everything's on. We're on iPads, we're on our phones, we're in our, um, you know, basically on our um, tablets all day long, and we can do this all through the season, and we're not really resting. So we've learned not to have to hibernate. So, when this is happening, uh, one thing we have to pay attention to is that we must accentuate the immune system because we're in a culture and a world where we're not slowing down.
Now, the child is having this issue where they keep having a cold come up, but that is the time in the season, remember it this way, that the, that the body of your child is seeing an opportunity to try to get this infection out. Now, I can hear what many of you guys are thinking. What if there's a strep infection or flu virus that's inside the body or inside the lungs and your child gets around some kid that has enterovirus or have roseola virus or some kind of virus that's going around? Could that virus get into the body and decrease the immune system? And then those flu viruses see an opportunity because the immune system is so challenged by another infection, it goes, oh, I got an opportunity to go to another cell. I'll jump out of the bloodstream. I'll jump out of the tissue. I'll go to another tissue. That's totally possible. But I want you to realize that we have to strengthen the body in either case. That is the call. There's a dormant infection and it could be aggravated by a new one. But the goal is to get the organ strengthened so that no matter what infection, whether it's old or new, is coming into the body, you can fight it off. This keeps you from having to fight off that chronic infection every single season. I know you're frustrated. I've seen patients and mothers and fathers coming in going, you know, I just want this to stop. They keep getting tonsil stones every single season. They have ear infections. I have to put tubes in their ears. They have swollen eardrums. They literally have a runny nose. They have scabs in their nose. They have gunk in their eyes. I literally have seen it all the time in my office, every single season. And I'm thankful that many of the kids that have come in that have had these chronic cold and flu type symptoms have taken some good herbs, got on some different minerals and vitamins, and their parents literally will call me up and say, hey, I don't know what happened, but that stuff that you got them on has kept my son or my daughter from getting cold. Everybody else in the classroom got sick, but they didn't. Now, this is the thing. When you see this happening, when everybody in the whole classroom is getting sick and you're saying, well, it is spreading like wildfire. Remember, every other kid in the classroom has their lung and large intestine meridians being strengthened to help them fight off the season to get ready for the hibernation of the full winter. You get what I'm saying? Every other kid is going through the same thing. Unfortunately, we lived in a culture and environment where there's modified foods, like genetically modified foods. There's basically foods that are enriched with uh, too many things that are preservatives and not natural. And so you have a culture where there's high sugar, high starches, preservatives, fake foods, chemicals in our foods, in our diet, uh, pesticides. And all of a sudden you have this battleground within the body that all these infections are fighting for position. And they're taking place in the child. And one of the craziest things is that if you research a lot of the, the children and people in our world, there are common lung infections that are in about 85 to 90 percent of the world, according to even the World Health Organization, such as mycoplasma, mycoplasma anaplasma, which gives us walking pneumonia. They say that it's one of the most common type of bacteria that's overgrowing in the lung tissue. So you have all these children in a classroom and possibly most of them have, you know, mycoplasma or anaplasma. Or some type of Klebs yellow pneumonia, guaranteed if they just lived in this world, these type of pneumonia bacteria are residing in the lungs. And this lung energy is starting to accentuate and the body's like, I got to get it out. And then one kid starts to, you know, cough and sneeze and they're pushing out infections and they, you know, play and have fun with their other friends. And all of a sudden these, you have this triple whammy. You have this perfect storm. You have old infections coming to the surface. One child breathing one out and affecting another. So you have a new infection into a different child. And then you have the large intestinal lung meridians energizing the whole body to try to push it all out. And that's why, like many times, people who come into my office, some do homeschooling. Some do smaller classrooms. But when you put a whole bunch of kids in one area and these huge schools, and nothing against them. I'm just saying that in these big areas, you have all of these things happening at one time. Now, why is it that a parent could tell me, okay, my kid is taking this herb and this supplement and they did not get sick because those herbs, there's two things herbs can do. Most of the time they're irritants. They can kill off infections. There's components of the herbs that actually kill off the infection. And the herbs also have irritants that actually stimulate certain organs to release the infection so it can be flushed out. Some herbs energize. To energize the tissue of an organ. So I want you guys not to be frustrated. So when you look at your child, you're not only going to get some recommendations right now about the herbs, but let's go through a couple simple things when you look at your child, okay? 
If your child gets puffy all over, gets swollen like they look like they've gained water weight, face gets thicker, you know, the arms and the legs seem a little bit like they're a little bit more soft, they get more pale, that is a sign of lung weakness. There's an infection hiding in the surface, under the surface, in the lungs. If the head, the temple area gets really swollen or the child says, man, my ears feel really tight and clogged here on the ears, that's a spleen issue, which means the spleen is overworking. I would definitely get my child checked for anything that could infect the spleen. Remember, temple swelling, swelling around the ears. Check for mono, Epstein-Barr virus, strep, staph, and flu virus or parainfluenza. If the dark circles occur under the eyes, like you see these bags and they become very dark underneath the eyes, if you're watching, you would need to find out if there's any type of infection within the kidneys. Yes, flu viruses and cold viruses can definitely make their way into the kidneys and cause you to have an overall activity of a cold or sinus infection. Literally, that's why people will pee more yellow or darker color urine. They'll get a urinary tract infection the body will start to release this out of the kidney in any way it can. Look for the dark circles underneath the eyes. If you stick the tongue out and there's any white coating on the back of the tongue, kidney and bladder infection, there's infections coming out of that area. You have to use different herbs to clean that organ out. We're going to go over, over that. Well, I'll tell you now, if you have a kidney infection, use Uva Ursi, U-V-A-U-R-S-I. Now, you can go to Hawaiian Farm, P-H-A-R-M, like pharmacy. It's a great organic tincture place out of Hawaii, and they have tinctures along with Supreme Nutrition products to help your children. So look for that so you can add it into their favorite juice or drink. So you have that. Now, the other things I would ask you to look for is rosy cheeks. Rosy cheeks right in the middle would represent that there's lung infections as well. Anytime you have a kid that gets hot and they're running a lot and they have really red cheeks, yes, they are making their, making their organs and their lungs work harder, but that means that there's an infection in the lung. They probably have some walking pneumonia bacteria. Nothing to get scared about. You just need to go get it checked for, anaplasma or mycoplasma. Another thing I would say you need to look for is any type of breakouts around the nose. If they get scabs or they get sores from a cold or sinus around their nose, it usually means that there's going to be some kind of infection, like a viral infection or a bacteria that's probably in the small intestine, sometimes in the heart, if it's around the nose. Now, I want you to look into this because then you can sort of correlate it to the symptoms the child has. If they have something within their lungs, they're always going to cough, <clears throat> clear their throat. If they have something in their kidneys, they're always going to urinate more. They'll have some bedtime wetting. Sometimes they say, I have to go pee a lot. Why does my kid who is young always have to go urinate all the time? Why are they afraid? Fear is the mechanism of the kidney. If it's in the spleen, they'll get swollen. They'll have swelling of the head, encephalitis type symptoms. You have to, re you know, when you start to put these mechanisms together and you start to see that, man, yeah, their cheeks are really red and they cough all the time. It's not to be scary. It's going, wow, Chinese medicine showed me that facial diagnosis, that there's some form of infection in that organ. That's okay because the herbs we're going to go over will help you clean them all out. Now, one thing I would say is as you start to see patterns of color changes in the face or in the tissue, if you see that a, your child has a particular type of symptom during this cold season, like I, just, like I was just saying, like a cold cough, clearing of the throat, you know that there's probably chronic infection in the bronchioles or in the lungs. If their mouth is always dry or they have hypersalivation, that's related to the spleen and stomach in Chinese medicine. So what you can do, I know this podcast is here to give you as much information as possible. What you guys can do, if you're listening, is write down the symptom and put Chinese medicine or traditional Chinese medicine symptoms and put dash and write that in. And it'll tell you which organ is infected. So if my child had like a salivation issue, they're always dry in the mouth or hypersalivating. And I relate it to the spleen. I look back and a lot of times there's chapped lips around the mouth. That's a huge indication that the spleen is swollen because the spleen is a big lymph organ. 
And that would tell me that I would need to get my child checked for anything that could be in the lymph nodes, get their lymphocytes checked, see if they're basically decreased because they're having to fight infection. And I'd get things like Epstein-Barr virus and strep and staph checked for to see if there's anything in the lymph nodes. That way, I have an idea going, no wonder they have that swollen appearance. No wonder their temples always get swollen up or their head seems like it's always in the clouds. So it gives you a peace of mind as a parent that as you see this, it's not to be afraid. It's just to give you good indication knowing that you have the strength and the know-how to go in and clean up these infections. Now, one of the things I always tell my patients to do with their children is that I want them to make sure that they look into a few things that I've written down here. Make sure that in a general rule though, that you're going to make, that you want your house to be clean in the air. And you want to have clean water and you want to have clean air just circulating. So what I'm saying is there are three things that I would say as you start to look into the herbals, during this season, remember, you want your house to have cleaner air. So you can use something like an air doctor, like an air purification. I use air doctors here in the office. You can use one of your choice that helps clean the air. Then I also use essential oil diffusers. So I usually use things like peppermint. I'll use what they call orange or anything citrus. I've even put out cinnamon. And some people call it thieves. Some people call it on guard in the doTERRA world. You can use these air purifying type essential oils like lemongrass to kill the infections in the air. So during the season, what I do here in the office, I do it at my house, is I put those in a diffuser and I run them part of the day. You'll be surprised if you put that in your child's room, how much as they breathe that awesome essential oil in, it basically will kill off the infections in their sinuses and their lungs. Two simple things. Remember, hydration. If your child does not drink enough water, if they're getting less than a cup of water a day and they're drinking more colas, or more shakes, or more milk, they're going to set themselves up to be dehydrated internally and they won't fight off the infection. So you need to hydrate. Four to six cups of water at least for your child. If they aren't, we need to really go into the herbs because I know some kids do not like to drink water. I understand. So you have to depend a little bit more heavily on the herbs. Now, if you're going to do essential oils and air doctor and you do hydration and um, water, remember that you need to have fresh air in the house. I know you recirculate, but at times you don't want to be freezing in your house, but you want to open up the windows and get some fresh air. You don't want to recirculate dirty air. And the essential oil diffuser helps, but I want you to know that fresh air getting outside is going to re-energize the lungs according to Chinese medicine. The electrical static of the air, yes, it has a static to it. It's been shown that if you go in and do good breath work, having your child be outside and getting some good breath in will actually help clean the lungs out. you got to get some of those infections out. We also have to make sure that the child is having a bowel movement. I know this is a lot to take in, but remember, if your child is only going to the bathroom once every two or three days, they are going to have chronically stuffed lungs and sinuses. So the intestines and the lungs have components known as endoderm cells. Your lungs develop from the tissue of your intestines as you're an embryo. Literally, you have your intestines forming and all of a sudden you have these this other set of cells which is the same type of cells but a set that gets off into its own little area and it becomes your lungs. So there's the same resonance which means they're the same frequency. They have the same type. And so an infection can get into the intestines, but it can travel its way up to your lungs. So usually you're finding out the same infections in both the lungs and the intestines. So as you start to clean out the intestines, you want to remove the toxic waste from the colon. This helps your lungs and its activity. The lungs don't then have to Literally take the toxic fluids from your body and try to push them out through your breath. If you are constipated, your body will take that toxic fluid from your bowels and try to push it out through your lungs. Have you ever had individuals that are, are constipated and their breath seems to be bad? They'll even tell you, I have halitosis, really bad breath, because the toxins are literally coming from their breath, from their, from the fluids in their body. 
if your child has chronically bad breath and has tonsil stones and has huge swollen tonsils and has crud and thrush, you have to get them to go to the bathroom. They have to have a bowel movement. Now, I'm not saying you go to extreme and get them a coffee enema. Always ask the, the advice of your primary care physician, but they need to increase their bowel movements. Does this mean they need to take a little bit more of magnesium? Like bio-optimizers, they use magnesium breakthrough. It has so many good different forms of magnesium, like malate and orotate and taurate. And you can use those and maybe break them open and stick it in some applesauce and give it to your child and help them start pooping. Make sure they're hydrated. Some individuals even put a red light, like a red light around their child's tummy for five minutes at night just to get that thing stimulated. Some may actually give their children enemas. Is this a good practice? I would ask your primary care, but I'd say this. You have to keep their colon clean. Another thing is keeping the sinus clean. Some individuals use a neti pot or flush the sinus out. And I've seen kids as small as one where their parents have just gotten them used to it, where they're spraying up there. And it's just these huge globs of snot coming out. Why? The sinus cavities are being infected. They're always bombarded. Not only are the lungs and large intestine bombarded, but the sinuses are heavily associated with the upper digestion. Okay, so you have to remember that we have to clean out the poop. And we have to clean out the sinuses. So if you do a neti pot or like, you know, anything that can actually move that snot out, that would help your child, especially in the cold season, to give it relief, give the sinuses relief. Always heal the upper digestion. Reduce sugars. Reduced, modified, and refined sugars. High amounts of starches and carbs are and dairy are going to be very hard on the digestive system, and they may feed infections that are at higher rates or levels within the lungs, the intestines, or the sinuses. So you want to reduce your sugars, your starches, and your carbs. You want to have the child hydrate plenty, but eat plenty of good proteins. Uh, proteins, especially during this season, to help build their body up. So those are some simple things that you can start to do now to get your child to clean up. Now, another thing that you could do is get some allergies tested for such as any type of allergy within the gut that's caused by food sensitivity. Some good kinesiologists and acupuncturists and physicians out there don't really like blood testing. Some do salivary testing for different types of food sensitivities. I found that a lab called Dunwoody Labs is a good lab. You can use one called ALCAT, A-L-C-A-T, Dunwoody or ALCAT. They have a pretty extensive system to test for any types of food that causes higher histamine or antibo antibody reaction like IgGs or IgE. Now, what that means is you can get an idea of what that person is allergic to, that child is, and I would say keep them off of it for at least two to three months, and that would give their body rest. That's another way to help with the whole issue of a reoccurring cold. Once the body gets cleaned out of the infections, then they'll have a better chance of like basically not getting the reoccurring cold. So those are the simple steps. The next thing we're going to look into is some of the herbs, some of my favorite herbs, guys. Okay. One of the first I would say now is astragalus in Chinese medicine. That's my number one when it comes to this season. Whenever you're thinking about a child and they do liquids, I say that there are some by Supreme Nutrition Products. So if you're out there listening, you can write Supreme Nutrition Products and check out their tinctures for your children. But if your children can take a pill or they can break it open into applesauce, you can use this product or you can actually go to the Hawaiian Farm website. Hawaiian Farm is really great with a P-H-A-R-M, like pharmacy. They have great tinctures. And another one is Woodland Essences, woodlandessences.com. Now, check them out and research because you can give your child like a, a small amount within the, their favorite juice or even water or some kind of a liquid or even put it in their applesauce and they'll usually will take it down. I know some people that use different types of grape juice, even though it's a little high sugar. It's the only way that their kid will get some things down. You had to figure out what works best, best for your children. Um, the, the best thing I've, I've seen work really well is astragalus, and it's basically Chinese medicine's supreme herb. It will increase the immune system, fight off viruses, fight off cold and bacteria. It's one of my favorites. It increases the immune system. The next one I love is elderberry, elderberry supreme. It's one of my favorite products. I'm telling you, kids love it. It tastes great. You cannot go wrong when the kid gets a dropper full of this, maybe two or three times a day, maybe a little bit of astragalus, maybe five to 10 drops, two or three times a day. And you will see that these will help build the immune system. But elderberry has been used for centuries to help kill off viral infections. 
Elderberry and stragglers are so good at killing out viral infections. They help build the immune system. Those are two of my top favorites. I have a whole bunch of them, so let's keep going. Another one that I see that works really well and you wouldn't believe is olive leaf. Olive leaf supreme or olive leaf tincture. You put a little olive leaf into a juice, you will see that the viruses cannot replicate. That's the beauty of olive leaf. They can't keep reoccurring. So if you want the viruses to stop reoccurring, then try out olive leaf. They all work wonders against viruses. You don't have to use all three. You can try one. Try the one that tastes best, elderberry. But if your child can handle the taste, if you put it in juice, try the one that resonates best for you as the parent. And even if you're an adult, try it out. I say go for it. And you know, when you look at these uh, supplements, you start taking them. You're like, man, I, I realize that my head's not as stuffy. I didn't get cold. I didn't have any allergy reactions this winter season. Can you change them up? Yes, take olive leaf for three or four weeks and then go to astragalus. You don't want any allergic reactions. You don't want to have like a, a bad change in your poop schedule or your bowel movements or your energy levels or your sleep. But if you're noticing that you're actually getting sleep, stick with that herb. It will help tons. Another one I love is chrysanthemum. Now, chrysanthemum is something that's super safe for pregnant ladies, for children, for nursing mothers. Chrysanthemum. This is called Vitagard Supreme. It's known as chrysanthemum mortifolium, okay, or morifolium. It's one of my favorites. You can give it to children, you give it to uh, nursing mothers, and I'm telling you, this is one of the safe all-time go-tos. So if you are sensitive, and you know your child's sensitive to a lot of things, check out Vital Guard Supreme or Chrysanthemum. It's very gentle, but it kills off yeast and mold, viruses, and bacteria. It's a multi-antimicrobial, and it's been used in Chinese medicine for centuries, being very safe for young ones and for mothers. Another thing I add in for extra vitamin C is acerola, acerola supreme. When a child is really, really dehydrated, you start giving them water. This is a really good tincture. It has that acerola cherry vitamin C content. Give them two or three good dropper fulls a day. You'll start noticing that their immune system will go right up. They'll get energy back. You will not even know that they got sick after a few days of taking that. And a couple other that I really like, um, if it's a really heavy infection, one of the things I really like is Golden Thread Supreme. Now, Golden Thread is one of the best because it's one of Chinese medicine's all-time antimicrobials and antibacterials. Now, it's called Chinese Coptis, Coptis Chinensis, C-O-P-T-I-S. So if you're listening and you want a heavier hitter, Golden Thread is really good. But I always say stick with the gentle ones for young ones and then the golden thread. If it's a really deep infection after you start using these gentle ones and you notice it's a kind of a fighting infection, maybe try a little bit of golden thread to see if you can knock some things loose. Now, these are all the recommendations for different types of um, herbals. But I say that when we are in this fall time season, don't forget to give your child also not only the, the magnesium and the hydration and some of these extra therapies, but give them some good bone broth. My mom did. I got good bone broth every season. We just uh, soak the bones and, and we would boil them. And you take that and it gives such a high amount of good nutrients and collagen to the body to help fight off the infections. Bone broth, good chicken, chicken soup. And they, they sound corny to say it, but it's true. It works. It's been shown through clinical research and through experience. So I'd say if you did bone broth, also we used to take seaweed. My mom would take the bone broth. And this is a common thing in Korea. During the fall time season, we take rice and some people can't eat rice, but we take rice and put in the bone broth. And then we take seaweed and sea kelp that had been boiled. And it's to us, it's delicious. And you put it in there and you'd have that iodine and you had those rich minerals with the seaweed. That would give you the minerals you need for the fall time season. So seaweed soup, I want you to research seaweed soup. It's delicious. Some people won't like it. I love it. So those are some of the things that you want to do. You want to make sure that you get a stew that has, you can add turnips to it. You could add, add some ginger. You could add any type of white, grayish, light yellow type root vegetable to a stew. And it has the constituents to actually help raise your immune system and help fight off the infection. That's another good quality of using stews with spices and herbals. Could you use a spice that you know that kills off infections such as rosemary or thyme? Yes. Oregano? Yes. 
That's why that you see some of these cultures that use them so much do not get sick that much. So use foods and get those foods into the diet of the child. Get them used to it. Stay away from excessive sugar stuff like too many cakes or pastries, any types of pizzas or any type of heavy dairy creamers. Like most individuals say, well, I, you know, I'm going to give them a healthier source of uh, fast food. There's not very many healthy sources of fast food, and I understand. So it's hard to go through life and say, I, I don't have time to actually fix the food because we're on the go. So if that is the case, I say that you need to make sure that they just hydrate, take some of the magnesium, take some of the things I've been suggesting, and then at least we'll get the body, its immune system up. So if they do have to eat things on the go, they're not so heavy laden internally. Okay. I think that's some uh, basic things I would do if I was always on the go. Now, I want to make sure I went through all my notes, but I wanted this to help you if you know there's something reoccurring all year every year at the same time. Yes, you can use probiotics. I like probiotics, but I always say that you want to clean out the infections first before you start adding probiotics. You can get a good child pro probiotic eventually, but first you want to clean the infections out. So let's remember that we want to cleanse gently. We want to see that this season they don't get sick as much, but the biggest kicker is this. They won't have springtime allergies and the next winter they won't get sick as much. I can almost guarantee you that. If you stay consistent, t teach your child to like take these things, it'll save you in the long run the hassle. I know sometimes kids won't want to take that, but I, I usually see people that will put like hopefully some juices that are not so sugary, but they'll put them and mix them up like a little frother and have them drink it down as long as you can get into the child. Remember, this is just my thoughts. I don't want you guys to be frustrated. And I want all the adults out there to think that uh, they're listening going, what about me? You can do the same thing. The Like the supplements in, in uh, Supreme Nutrition products, those serving sizes are meant for about a 150-pound person. You can take the serving size, and you can cut the dosages down or increase them according to 150 pounds. That's how it works. You can research that on their website, and they'll tell you how to like use it for weight. But if you're an adult and you've had this issue since you were a kid, I want you to check these herbs out, give them a try, and you'll start to see that you won't get as sick. People say, well, how long do I have to take it? I don't know about you out there, guys, but I'm willing to take certain herbs throughout my life to continuously clean out my infections so I live a vibrant, healthy life. Do I switch them up? Yes. But I cannot determine which pollens and which dust and which bacteria and which viruses I'm going to encounter every single season. I have to keep my body strengthened up. So I hope this helped guys. And um, I hope that you guys like this type of information. So if you do, please share this. Please hit that small bell or chime on the podcast um, page so that it can be, you can be reminded when we have another one come up. And just like and subscribe if you if you enjoy it. And if you have comments, please send us comments in the comment section. We like to listen to them and try to make content that is approachable and, and simple and easy to understand. Share this with anybody you know that keeps having the same kind of issues like we just talked about year after year. So just remember, if you need help from us, we're always here to help. Thank you for tuning into the Unchain Health Podcast. Stay tuned. This is where we, we try to incorporate where East meets West. And we know that we need to take more vitamin D and vitamin C and vitamin B to help with these things. I know that, but this is the ancient Chinese medicine approach alongside the Western medicine. So yes, like and subscribe, share this with anybody you know. Until next time, I'm your host, Dr. Chris Molly. Thanks so much, guys. Have a good one.